recording. Thank you. On the using OBS Studio. Yeah, yeah. So what I want to find well, find out quickly what's you know what's the most interesting part that you'd like to get involved in. So for the ninety hour, no, that's three months. What what, what does it say? The, the 90, ninety day. Ninety day. Ninety which, days. Which is which is three months. Yeah. Three mm -hmm. months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the most interesting part for me would be becoming involved with uh, FreeCAD because I, I did yeah. I did study um, mechanical engineering. I think that might be the best the best uh, work field mm -hmm. for me. Where are you Where are you working right now? Uh, right now I'm um, I'm trying to find a, a part time job. It's a, it's difficult finding a job in the in the engineering field, in the engineering sector, and uh, basically, I'm, I'm trying to find a yeah a part-time job. Um, um, w were you asking if I'm working in anything uh, engineering related or generally? Generally, more generally. generally. So you finish you finished um, school in the UK, and now you're you stayed there. I f I finished uh, yeah I finished my my master's degree. And uh, yeah, I'm staying in the UK. I like it here. It's better than it's better than staying in Greece. So and yeah. that's you don't have any issues like they in the European Union. You can go from one country to another like that. They don't. Or do uh, you have this to is a uh, yeah. This is this is actually not that easy as like um, since Brexit happened. Mm. We are um, people are required to go through an application process for entering the UK, mm. uh, and if I do want to exit the UK myself, I will have to be back uh, in like um, like three or four or five months, something like that. So I have I have a limited leave. Uh, I have the right to leave for a limited amount of time before returning. So, even if you yeah. get a job or. Yeah, even even if I get a job, if mm. uh, if I if I wanted to theoretically, if I wanted to stay in the UK permanently, I would have to I would have to stay in the UK for five years from now, and then I would be given the right to to leave the UK for more than a year. But for now, yeah, for now I'm in the UK and I'm I'm, I'm trying to make a living here. So for the next five months. The, that's for the next. Uh, that's probably for the next five years, except if except if my plans change. I'm not, I'm not saying I will be in the UK for the next five years, but if I do want to get um, if I do want to get the right to to leave the UK for more than basically I have to stay in the UK for more than five years in order to have the right to leave the UK for more than one year. Because this this, uh, this is the new the new, reg new regulation after yeah. Brexit. Yeah. Are you so? Yeah. You, how much experience you, you do you? Yeah. Go ahead. You, you must be from. Uh, are you from Poland? I yeah. Heard? Yeah. And you're staying in America, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I came here a long time ago. Yep. Did you did you like the America? Was it was it your decision to come to America or? Well, maybe I was a little kid, so that I was ten. So it was my parents, but yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, man, I mean, Poland, that was under the communist rule at that time. And right now it's yeah, exactly. turning into a fascist state. So it's, I think Is it's, it? here it's much, Is it? <laughs> well, it's pretty com <laughs> from what I hear. Yeah. It's kind of, uh, yeah. Like politically speaking, it's right. I think right now it's quite conservative. I mean, I, you know, the whole American dream thing, it's real, you know, it's, uh, it's, yeah. there's opportunity. There's possibility and opportunity. Of course, some people, a lot of people get left out, but um, I wasn't left out and I want to bring everybody up. <laughs> that's nice. That's nice so, to hear. Um, yeah. So, so which, which, uh, which state are you living in? Just out of Missouri, curiosity. Kansas City. Missouri, yeah? Yeah. I've never been to the, to the US, but I, I do like the, um, I, I'm jealous of the weather up there. You have, you have a better weather than the UK and you have forests and stuff like that I want to visit sometime. oh we have yeah we have some amazing <laughs> natural parks in the southwest and a lot of yeah. beautiful areas and but right now it's very cold here in this particular area right now but anyway. is it yeah same yeah. here it's uh, it's actually snowing here yeah 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 same here same here right now we're at like <laughs> negative 10 C down to negative 20 C at night yeah oh, that's I a mean, lot. that's uh yeah 
Yeah, really cold yeah, spell right. right now. That's that's like the coldest. <laughs> that's a really cold time for us here. But I was going to say, so so with a CD go home work, for one. Yeah. Well, I was just going to ask if you're by any chance interested in because we're I mean we're doing that. We're rolling this house out and. We're inviting anybody who wants to actually get trained to do that. Like, so if you have any interests of actually switching, that would, what's what kind of engineering are you doing? What was it? Mechanical. Mechanical. Um, I, I'm, like I am aware that you. Um, I'm, what's that? It will be a total shift. But I mean, I, I always ask people about this. It's like if you want to do this, this is about creating an open source economy. And I think we've got to. I mean, I think this is really going to work. Like as far as building houses, we're going to start building houses for people. Real I know houses. you. You have already you yeah. have already completed uh, one Echo Home Sid Home 1.0. Yeah, yeah, we've done a lot of that, but that's and a different you, story. Doing that, that was at our facility here, but as far as running a business, doing that and training other people to do that, that's a different game. You've got project, you got product, and you got enterprise after that. So we have yeah. never been at the enterprise level. It's always been R and D. You know, to this phase until we're rolling some products out, and right now we're starting starting to sell things like the 3D printers, but we really want to generate bootstrap revenue through the the open house project. So, what, and uh, train people. What about what about the the tractor, the 2.0 oh, yeah. tractor? Are you in, indeed, is that's, it, is that would be a, one thing mm -hmm. to get involved in too. But but when we talk about the house, we're rolling out the tractor and the 3D printer. And torch table because you got to have the torch table to build those things. Mm -hmm. uh, we're rolling that out too, so that's part of the house project. You do so all that together. It's high. Yeah. The the tractor is high interest right now. I'm using the one from 2014, and it's an old model. And we know how to do it, and we think we can do. I mean, we can do for larger tractors. We can do 10x cost reduction. Like if if it costs them, I mean, the expensive tractors are. You know, you're talking about two hundred fifty thousand dollars or so. We can probably do a tractor like that for about fifty thousand dollars. Probably. All right, that sounds nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what I was thinking uh, with regards to your recommendation, or with regards to your offer, was um, if we can manage, uh, if we can manage a, a, a remote, a remote uh, kind of a work pattern. So if I could uh, work on the free card remotely, rather than actually visiting the U.S. for now, or in the near future, because I really haven't thought about that as a, as until now that you mentioned this proposition. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, how, how does that? <coughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So we sound? should we should start that think start thinking about that and see where that goes. Um, are you um, so FreeCAD? Uh, can you design stuff like you can do? For example, like right now. Okay, well, the the thing that right. Okay, if you talk about the tractor, one active point of development is the actual modular track unit. Let me show. Let me actually share share a screen with you to see what we're doing right now, to yeah. so you can appreciate the evolution of this. Um, just. To sh a modular track. Um, yeah, it's called a universal track unit on a wiki. So I mean send you well, actually, let me share my screen, uh, and also send you the link here so you can take a look at that later. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm, I'm sharing here. So this 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 is the thing. Um, it kind of looks like this, but well, let's see. So what's this about? 3D CAD. Um, so we've done wheeled tractors and we did some track tractors, but right now we're developing this thing here where this is like very scalable it's geared down it's a track unit that goes on any tractor and you can build from a very little one to putting like these can handle up to like 10,000 pounds of drive force they're quite heavy duty okay. 
So four of them is 40,000 okay. pounds of dry force. You're talking about a decent bulldozer kind of a thing at that time. Um, let's see what's to be shown about it. Um, I mean, that's, that's an actual development that we're going to look at prototyping. Well, let's see, let's just download it. Mm. We're going to actually look at prototyping that in this late this year. Mm -hmm. um, I'm actually just download so we can float through this cat a little bit. Now this is pretty good because it's um it's a very mod it's designed to be like I'm totally totally modular. So um okay. as in <coughs> To the point where you can take one of these on and off very easily, like in oh man, what is this? That's it doesn't have it, but it doesn't have the other parts. But it's essentially driven by a hydraulic motor with a with like a threefold gear down. You could get very inexpensive motors, like two hundred dollar motors, that drive this. And this is connected. Well, this is sitting. Yeah, let me just quit that. That's, there's not much to show there. Um, so let's talk uh, more does, conceptually. It, but that's um, it, it does look, yeah. Say it. Okay, how does it look? It does look very interesting, and um, I mean, this is my, uh, mm -hmm. this is my kind of, uh, this is my kind of field. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I could see myself researching on the on this specific topic. I, I, I have not worked with uh, with uh, either tractors before. I have done some some light work. What I mean is, I've done some engineering uh, university projects with regards to to gearboxes. But mm -hmm. well, I, I can certainly do some research if I can have um, if I can have access to the um, to the current work. I can do some research and see how I can uh, contribute to this uh, to this uh, problem. Mm -hmm. It does. It does look interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. Um, idea being that, like the, we have pretty much mastered the ability to build power cubes, frames. So drive systems, frames for any kind of a, a heavy machine. The next major point is is about the wheel unit itself because. Um, then conceptually mm -hmm. speaking, it becomes very easy for anybody. Let me see, where are you here? Can I can I have a minute to pick up some pen and paper? Yeah. 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 yeah go ahead. All right then. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you are concerned with the uh, wheel unit for now? Yeah, because given our modular approach, the concept is if if we can build frames and power units of any size, and the power units are scalable, then you can. Then the missing link is how do you do tr the drive actually on the wheels? Because that's uh, the transmission and drives, that's like the complicated part of making a system have the right kind of drive force, longevity, yeah. and the track is there very specifically, I mean, so you can go anywhere. I mean, we're on a land here, if you're doing any kind of new work, you don't want to get stuck, so tracks are the, <laughs> the favorite option. And this can integrate also, like part of it is for 3D printing, we can actually start thinking about how we print the tracks as well. Or even just mm -hmm. pads that go around the metal so that the ride is a little smoother. So things like that. But right now, it's essentially a geometry problem where we take a hydraulic motor and we know some basic numbers, like it's got such and such a torque, and then we gear it down 
and what it's what is the speed and power and torque of it going to be so we're designing for each one of these being uh, we're aiming for the the machine with four of those okay uh, we're aiming for the 8,000 pound which is a good really good skid steering kind of a tractor like 8,000 pounds is really good between six and eight thousand pounds six would be acceptable too six thousand would be acceptable too that's just pounds of force for the four units so between one thousand five hundred and two hundred and two thousand pounds per drive unit so it's um um i mean what are the challenges there the, the challenges there are i mean we always focus on i mean anyone can do it. okay so you can you know take any parts and do this but if we start with a motor that we know that's accessible, why, like we, we got away from this, these heavier motors. Like right now, we're doing these very, very accessible two hundred dollar motors. Before we were using more like these five hundred dollar, less accessible, much stronger wheel type motors. We're moving to simpler motor. This is talking about access. We're talking about access anywhere around the world. So this is, we're trying to design for a scalable system. For a system mm -hmm. that has no replication barriers anywhere in the world, um, because we do believe in, um, we still nobody has really well. 3D printers maybe have shown the idea that open source is just superior and, and it just basically dominates the market. Uh, we've seen that with software. For hardware, we call we call that here. It's called distributed market substitution. Basically, where okay, you don't have like one, two, or three, or five companies in the world. There's hundreds of thousands of companies around the world doing that and doing it better and doing it at a smaller scale. I mean, that's yeah. an inevitable outcome uh, that I can envision. I think it's, I think most people can't see that. I think it's very clear that that's going to happen. Um, but with that in mind, it's we're trying to de devise a very robust, universal kind of system that's, that's also scalable because you can do different gear down or you can use different hydraulic motors that would be much stronger and stuff like that. But um, st so starting with a very accessible motor, it's about uh, what's the problem statement. There's just a few components like you have to have tensioning on a track and and the ability of this to last for a long time. So I've got a bunch of ideas on that. But at the end of the day, so there's a whole design rationale behind it. But at the end of the day, it's about making all the geometry fit. You know, so just going through the problem statement, like, but uh, have you ever built stuff or this is, this is like normal, like you don't get to build stuff like me before you go out <laughs> into the wild. Um, I, ideally when, um, I've built some stuff, like I've built, um, I've built a small sized, uh, um, a small sized, uh, autonomous driving uh, vehicle using mm -hmm. Arduino, mm -hmm. uh, using basically Arduino, LabVIEW. Uh, some basic uh, wood cutting for the frame, oh. uh, stuff like that. We. That? Do you have any pictures of that, or? Uh, yeah, I do. I can send you some pictures. Yeah, I have. I have the documentation and the report. Um, making it, making it uh, follow directions, as in north or south or that sort of stuff. Making it. Uh, see obstacles and uh, did you uh, did you have a, a joystick controller or was it autonomous more autonomous? uh it was uh, it was a uh, wired yeah it was a wired controller wired joystick controller wired joystick oh wow well mm -hmm. see because the other thing we want to do is do that for the real machine which is wireless just joystick for the tractor so so that's, that's yeah. a feature that's that's a good feature to have i mean it's it's not far out. It's, it's actually quite easy <laughs> with uh, hydraulics. Yeah. That's the first time I hear of a, a remotely controlled tractor. Oh, uh, that's so as in yeah, that's state of art for the the professional machines. But it's a perfect area for open source development because you've got Arduino and you've got solenoids <laughs> and the stuff of remote right, joysticks right. that's very common for toys. It's not a far like the the difference between that and a real system is actually not a lot. Um, mm -hmm. But I don't wanna. Like, is that? Are you interested in doing anything like that? Devising a system um, for like for hydraulic control of a system like that, or? 
Not really. Uh, I would uh, I would mostly be interested, uh, like I said, when when you mean um, when you mean hydraulics, uh, do you mean like? Can you explain that again? Yeah, fluid power. Sure, so that's, sure. that's high pressure fluid power. Fluid powers, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so you're talking about like 3,000 PSI. Um, um, that's like 3,000 PSI is 200 atmosphere, 200 bar. So you, you work mm -hmm. in like megapascals, so it'd be like what, 20 megapascal? Uh, yeah, know, that would. Units? That <laughs> would be interesting, yeah. If. if <laughs> If I could have some, uh, like, uh, if I could, of course, see some uh, written stuff, like written yeah. statements, uh, problem statements, mm -hmm, see mm -hmm. what, um, so I can get a, a better image. Yeah, so that's, yeah, that's, well, I mean, if you've done that, I mean, if you show me what, what you've done with the other one, I can tell you what would be needed for the other one. Um, what did Lab yeah, Exactly, do? see, the, 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 the thing is, uh, yeah. Well, I have done some. Well, I have done a lot of university work and projects. Mm. Uh, I, I think one of the obstacles is um, I have not worked uh, for for like uh, for enterprises before. I have not worked under uh, strict standards. So I myself am am questioning whether I can uh, whether I can uh, do the required work without having any any type of supervision so i mean if if the workload is uh, is is too complex for me and i would require some supervision i could maybe assist uh, in any other way so in any like easier work does that make sense um what's what's the point of that message that so the point is that the point is that when it comes to like you said, you 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 want you want to have a a motor for your tractor, and you want to solve all that geometry pro problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But um, I can I I could give my best shot, and I could actually do some research and try to see how we can approach this problem and try to propose a solution. But uh, since I have not worked yeah, in yeah. an enterprise mm -hmm. environment before. I'm not sure whether or not I would require some sort of uh, supervision. Yeah, okay, okay. No, that and makes sense. In the case of, yeah, in the case of requiring supervision, I mean, I could be useful uh, in any other like simpler work. I know you're doing. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, f for me, uh, the ideal thing for me would be to be in, to become involved in some type of mechanical uh, engineering related uh, problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah. Yeah. I'm open to I'm open to other stuff like video no, editing think, or simpler stuff like that. Hmm, hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I think um, you know I'm, I'm always trying to focus on what's the core, trying to involve the whole team like as we go forward, so everybody actually contributes to the core work. And we we could say that the tractor is definitely core work because when we go out to do the builds, we actually want to just like right now I'm using the tractor for some tasks but not all of them. Uh, we definitely want to get that up for the building project. The, the, the very, very direct uh, task would be to actually work on on the home design work. Um, mm -hmm. But I think both <coughs> both the home, um, we are going to, like, um, as far as the large-scale collaboration aspect, in August we will do this large hackathon. So... Uh, I think be because of your skill set with the tractor, I think that's probably the most most relevant that you can help with right now in terms of useful contribution. Okay. I think, and and on okay. a track unit, I mean, there's already uh, like a basic design, and a lot of it is kind of like it did like all the calculations and basics. So if it's really about, it's largely drafting it with minimal amount of actual design. Is that good? A lot of it yeah, that, drafting. that sounds. Yeah, yeah. This, this drafting sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, because the other side good. is, you know, the design side. Like, you can definitely input. Like, if you have idea, there is some problem solving there. Like, I mean, I don't know the detail. Like, for example, say the tensioning mechanism, right? Uh, yeah. How you tension the track, which is a thing you have to do. Um, 
how do you implement that? So I can pretty much guide you like, okay, here's the simplest, most buildable stuff. I mean, I can give feed you the knowledge, okay, this is simple. Yes, this passes. It uses uh, widely accessible parts. It's very easy to build and super easy to maintain. And it's modular, mm -hmm. so it can be put on the tractor and off. So say it breaks, zero downtime. You, you have another one, you have a spare one uh, sitting around, it's like a spare wheel. That's right. You know stuff like that, like things that are super about human control over that technology, as opposed to the technology controlling you. So I can provide all that, and that's um, that's largely documented. So maybe I can. Uh, um, yeah, that. Let's that do that. Work. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, let's do it. What yeah. I can do is I can send you the the documents of what we have already. <clears throat> I started a thing called uh, Tractor Design Guide also. Um, let me share my screen just again, just, just for a few screenshots here. Uh, so in this Tractor Design Guide, like there's, let's see what's relevant here. I mean, these are calculations like say motor selection, um, yep. scale, but like for example, this is the kind of, ah, I, I wouldn't do this or that. Just individual track units are simplest. Just multiplying them. Um, just little basics of how this thing comes together. Motor selection. Um, motor selection. So the one that it's not not. Oh, there's another. Engines like the power cube, you don't have to worry about that. Um, but basically, like, so there's design pattern language, you've got some building blocks, like what you would have to worry about. Okay, it's really an application of a universal rotor, so there's the things that would go specifically into the wheel unit would be you don't have to worry about the power cube. There's a rotor, there's a hydraulic motor, there's a sprocket, there's a chain. There's bearings, there's mm -hmm. gonna be uh, fittings for the hydraulic motor, there's gonna be a shaft, bushing, clamp collar, hoses, nuts and bolts, tracks. <laughs> so it's like, you're just gonna say, okay, I, I need this structure to fit this all in, let's do it. Um, so basic chain drive application of this. There's another document, so this is, um, if you wanna take this, this is actually at Tractor Design Guide. It's the top document there. Right. Let me type that in so you can have that. And then there's another doc that I started about. Let's see what we have for track. <coughs> Universal track unit. Um. Tractor. Oh yes, so this is st actually so that we call it Life Track 2012 since this was started in December. Um, and that that's going to be actually under. Okay, so that's 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 the actual. So so we call that the one we're going to build in September is actually going to be called this because we pretty much uh, so here this one um, yeah yeah so you have things like if you want to generate a sprocket <coughs> so you know that's there's some mm -hmm. tasks like you got to generate the sprocket I we can use the one that we have already that you'll see but maybe you need to generate it um, but here's some parts of the CAD uh, and the idea is we start with the most, like for example, you see this motor here, that's a representation, good enough. Like if it's got the right geometry, don't worry about any more detail. You know what I mean? Okay. As long as it's got the critical details, like, okay, how long is it? What's the bolt pattern? How long is the shaft? How thick is the shaft? If, as long as you have some critical parameters set, don't worry about like little details. Um, mm -hmm. 
but in this document here, yeah, so this is kind of like where we at with, like in this, if I zoom into that one, you actually see that the way it's modularly designed, it can fit one or two hydraulic motors right next to each other, but don't, don't worry about two for now, we'll just do the one. But it's a very simple design, three shafts and bearings, and uh, the drive is on top, the two bottom ones are idling, they're not driven, um, okay. and there has to be a tension mechanism, one for the track and one for the chain. So there's going to be two tensioning mechanisms and that have to be very accessible for a user to tension without you having to like get under the tractor, which is dangerous or, you know, stuff like that. Just I can point you to the right considerations on that. So um, motor selection valves you don't have to worry about the hydraulics all you know is that that's going to have two hydraulic hoses going to it and that's it that's all you need to worry about um but this is the this motor here the 742 rpm this one actually mm -hmm. here this is actually what we're using as the one that we would do and it's 200 bucks under uh so yeah this is actually a good one that gets us pretty decent speed and you can figure out things like that, like speed from. You you didn't you weren't exposed at all to hydraulics or anything. Uh, mostly. No, not that much. Not mm -hmm. that much. But if I if I do if I do research on hydraulics, I believe uh, I will understand everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. For this problem. Yeah. The idea here is. Um, all you need to know about the hydraulics is that this hydraulic motor that I showed you has two inlets, one inlet and outlet, and mm -hmm. that's it. You just need fittings to go in there and the hoses, which are soft. But the hose routing is critical because these are going to be soft hoses coming out of this um, after the fittings. So in the design, you have to consider where are those hoses going. Like, so they don't break, they don't wear out, you know, or don't get jammed or anything like that. Um, and let's see, like, the thing, the design here should start with, uh, there should be one page here that talks about uh, design rationale. So I think there's going to be a page, universal track unit right that's what i sent you and the critical thing is right here requirements you know you can study so the the blue ones are the ones that are filled out the red is missing so really this is this is your problem statement the universal track unit so let's look at what the value proposition and requirements are so there you go this is the most critical um <laughs> right is it um <laughs> Is it uh, yeah. the you just uh, sent the universal truck unit? Yep. The, um... Yep. Okay. Oh yeah. Says, uh, universal uh, truck unit. The first link in the uh, chat box. Uh, the first one. The first one from the bottom or the top? Top. From the top. Uh, the first one from the top says there's no text in this page. Should I? Yeah. Okay. Wrong. Yeah. Wrong. Just go. Go back. Let me. Let me send it again. Should I? Yeah. Here. For some reason, there was a backslash at the end. Sorry yeah, about I that. Yeah, it was a backslash. I found it. Yeah. Um, but the requirements. That's the that's the most critical thing. Quick connection. Well, I can uh, I can yeah, yeah I can have um, I can uh, have a look <laughs> through all the information here. Um, and um, I I can get back to you with. Yeah. Um, any feedback on now yeah. I can contribute to this <clears throat> yeah um, so I sh should I so yeah. I'm all, all yeah should I focus on the um, so we're looking at the uh, at the um, at the development tree I can see design technical design bill of materials yeah um, I will have a look at everything that is shown here and um, so the, the the slides that you just showed me are where are they? Are they in the um, are they in so the actually, tree? Yeah. So the slides, yes, that's under the requirements. 
All right, then. So the way this works, the development tree is called the development template. Yeah, like the, the CAD, you can go to the CAD, you can go to the requirements. Industry mm -hmm. standards, there's really nothing there. Conceptual design is really the same as the first page, so there's not much. But the thing you have to, st you can start working with is uh, what CAD there is. But the thing is that when I did this first, the things you can probably recycle are the shafts, sprockets, bearings, but everything else about the geometry, it's, uh, it has to be optimized. Like, like, for example, I just chose that triangular shape. As it is, it's arbitrary. It doesn't consider the exact, you can optimize that space and make it, I mean, I, idea is, is probably you want it to be. Yeah, have, like you said, you, know, you can smallest. optimize the space. Yeah, optimize You the can space. optimize the space to have to have people uh, mess around with yeah. the hydraulic pumps without going under the tractor. Exactly, like things that. like that. Mm -hmm. So access, so, yeah. like access to the... Um, so here's, well, yeah, here's one way, yeah. like just to get you really focused on doing this, it's like start, start like this. So start by, um, take the hydraulic motor itself, so cat it up from the, from the, the website itself, just, uh, guess the best dimensions unless you can find a technical model on the internet somewhere uh, but just guess the best dimensions draw it up and then okay. start yeah. putting like think of it as a as an explosion a part explosion i would say so okay you've got the motor i find one useful way to do good design is you just take exactly the parts that you know that you're going to use so start with the motor what goes on the motor you're going to need a coupler we know that the coupler mm -hmm. is going to go to a shaft, but it's the motor shaft. The coupler, be, that, that shaft can have the sprocket chain drive on it, right on it, direct drive. So then you, you're going to the chain, you're going to the drive sprocket. So kind of think about one part. Okay, this part touches this one. This is the next part. Start drawing it up that way. Maybe once you do an experiment of if you don't worry about, okay, I don't have to draw like the whole thing. Like one, one approach is, okay, underlying form. So you kind of think, okay, it's this triangular shape. It's like that. I'm going to draw that. Well, but mm -hmm. then at the end, you actually have to fit everything into that, which means you have to pretty much redo everything, right? The sizing and the... Yeah. yeah. So why yeah. not start with, um, as an experiment, try this. So just take exactly the motor you have make the best guess of the next part, the best guess of the next part, and keep going like that. Try that. Mm -hmm. And we are still talking about uh, three wheels, two of which are idler. As far as the track unit, yes, there's the top driven sprocket. All right. And the two All bottoms right. are idlers. Uh, I will do that then. I will, I will start doing some research on that specific topic and try to, try to make uh, yeah. an assembly, an idea of my own, and yeah. I will, uh, I will keep you updated. Yeah, that sounds good. And it's like just to let you know, like for example, the bearings and the shafts and the stuff that we've done, super simple, very robust. So we're just use just use two inch shafts. We have uh, access to that here, two inch as the mm -hmm. standard that's in fact uh i'm, I'm actually going to change it a little, because of the history of what we've done here one and seven eighths one and seven eighths do that there's a reason for that and the reason for that is you can find heavy walled pipe that fits right around that uh, which is not necessarily right. used in this project but in other parts ecologies in the project uh, so hi actually, historically, all the tractors have done either one and seven eighths shaft or three inch shaft. Three inches too mm -hmm. a little too big for here. One and seven eighths can get you very easily to ten thousand pounds of that the, one of these units can hold. So like forty thousand pound machines, um, and that you can still use that okay. one and a seven eighths for like a walk, small walk behind tractor. It's still doable. So just settle with that and yeah, see, see where you get. So yeah, think about the concept and then, right, okay, okay, but the thing is about documentation, yeah. Start a work log. 
So the, the biggest thing, um, try to do the pattern where you're keeping a paper trail of everything that you're learning. That's a pretty advanced thing to do because it's kind of hard to both learn and try to document at the same time. Do you think you can do that? You yeah, I think I can do that, and I, I do, I do, yeah. I do believe in the in the benefits of documenting, and I can document my work as I go. I, I mean, I've yeah. done it in the university. It's it's a common thing to, yeah, to really do stuff and write about it at the same time. I, I will try to document all my work. Yeah, yeah I, I saw, saw that in, in the way you approach the, the developer test, and I think you can do that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. So, um, so to do that, just start a Google Doc like. Um, just like the, you know, the, the all the documents I showed you, they're in Google Slides. Start your work doc. That's a Google slide. All right. Yeah. Start that, and then I, I can, you can yeah. show it to me. Like I can refer to that, and I can actually help you conceptualize, and I can edit it. So make it open and editable by anybody. Yeah. I got it. I got Excellent. it. Okay, then. You got it. Let's do this. So we'll build this in September. So you've got something to forward, look forward to. That you're actually okay. doing this for real. September, mm -hmm. yeah? Yeah. All right, then. All right, that sounds nice. All right. Thank you. <laughs> okay, well, uh, any, anything else? Do you have any other questions or anything? Uh, no, not really. I will keep you updated with my progress. Yeah. And uh, I do hope we can um, get uh, get this thing to work. We definitely <laughs> will. We know this works. It's just about, it's going to work. The question is, like, is it going to be robust and something that needs be a lot of, you know, mm -hmm. how, you know, how many changes do we have to make before it's actually, it's really robust because it will definitely work, but how robust will it be? In other words, easy to maintain, long lifetime. Like it just doesn't break. It's really, really solid, you know, stuff mm -hmm. like that. Because yeah, for example, because <laughs> for example, just now, like about a week ago, so I was doing a, some tractor work, and the shaft, the one and seven eighths shaft that I told you about, it just snapped. I lost <laughs> the wheel, right? So stuff yeah. like that. We have to design things like that out of this version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, they, do you do you use any simulation software? Oh man, or is it mostly practical no. experimenting? No, it's just basic back of the envelope like calculations that. like that. But you know, FreeCAD has simulation capacity. You know that? We yeah, we c maybe we could utilize that. I mean, yes. if you can, yes. if you could, you could, you could possibly see that the the majority of stress is happen in the in that specific exactly. part of the one and a seven eighth inch of a shaft so if you yeah. can see like if you can find the stress constant stress concentration spots using a uh, finite element analysis maybe you can optimize the design uh, better. yeah absolutely um, I can tell you by design that this kind of issue will not happen here but the thing that would be very useful is if you can teach the rest of us so think about this in the back back of your mind teach us how to do FEM with FreeCAD can you teach me that? I haven't done that I haven't touched that within FreeCAD yet I do have some experience with uh, finite element analysis and or computational fluid dynamics and stuff I have not uh, I have not uh, touched on um, FreeCAD finite element analysis, but I can get into it and see what's it like. And if I can learn it, yeah, I can I can teach it. I can make I uh, think you videos and stuff like that. I, I looked at some videos yeah. about it. I think it's relatively straightforward. I think it'll be pretty, mm -hmm. pretty quick, uh, hopefully so. But focus, yeah, one thing at a time if you have time to do that. Uh, we don't, I can tell you we don't, I mean, really need that because we're it helps, of course it helps. It gives additional insight. It's additional data. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely useful. It's not critical because we know that by considering the part specifications, we know that this will be okay. It will work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I understand, yeah. Yeah. All right then. Sounds good. And only last thing I would actually do. So 
there's you've seen the time logs on some people's pages I do I have mostly seen uh, your time log and maybe two or three more people yeah the one on my page is uh, I sum it up for everybody but here let me actually set you up to a time log right now um, So if you, let's see, can you refresh on your log? You see the yeah, sure. The log just appeared there. So that's a way. All these logs feed into the master time graph. So we're keeping track of all the development time it takes to build a new civilization. You like that? <laughs> just a minute. Let me let me find let me find um, my log. Cause I I do keep uh, I do keep okay I got it I got it yeah yeah I like that I like that yeah <clears throat> I like that how how does that work exactly I mean uh, type in does a it monitor does it monitor automatically or do I have no, no, to you, input my no, hours? No, you gotta you gotta put in your hours. So most important thing is yes. just keep all the notes in the wiki. You don't have to put many notes in there, but just put in your hours. And but it does require some text in there, so just t type in CAD design and then. 10 hours or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I do that once a week, or you can do it right after any time you, you do work on LSE. Yeah. All right, I got it. Excellent. All right. Well, All right. well good job. Thanks for joining the team, and uh, let's let's design this thing. And we'll be driving. Thank this. you. I will start. I will start reading on the on the tractor everything that all that information you just showed me. I will go through it yeah. once more. Try to figure out stuff, and I will go from there. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Then thank you. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye bye. Have a good one. Bye. Mm -hmm.